Assalamu alaikum, this is Dr. Hasna and today we will be studying a complex topic which is the venous system of the thoracic wall. So the venous system of your thoracic wall is mainly the azygous vein. So let's study about it. It's very important to know that the main vein of the heart is the vena cava. So there is a superior vena cava that comes on top of the heart and an inferior vena cava that is coming from beneath the heart. At the end of the day, all the veins have a similar function which is to bring the deoxygenated blood back to the heart. So the veins are carrying blood towards the heart, unlike arteries that were taking it away. So superior and inferior vena cava do the same thing. Now let's talk about the azygous channel of the thoracic wall. So it is important to know that just beneath the diaphragm. So if suppose this is the diaphragm just beneath it, as you all know, there are the vertebras. It is very important to know how the azygous vein is formed. It is very necessary to know that the azygous vein is a right sided vein. On the right side, on the right side of the vertebrae, the azygous vein is formed. And how is it formed? Well, let me tell you, this is the heart. This is the superior vena cava and the inferior vena cava. The inferior vena cava goes all the way down. So basically the azygous vein has to connect this inferior vena cava to the superior vena cava. So let's talk about this entire journey of the vein. So let's begin with the origin of the azygous vein. The main function of the azygous vein is to drain the thoracic wall. It also, or in addition to draining the thoracic wall, it also drains the upper lumbar region. So the main point is to get all the veins of the thoracic wall into the azygous vein. So the azygous vein is formed from, this is the inferior vena cava, it is formed from lumbar azygous. The lumbar azygous is a branch of the inferior vena cava. It is formed from the right-sided subcostal vein and finally the right ascending lumbar vein. So this is the right ascending lumbar vein. This is the lumbar azygous coming from the inferior vena cava. And finally, we have the right subcostal vein. The union of these three veins forms your azygous vein, which is the right-sided vein. And once this azygous vein is formed, it goes all the way up. It receives multiple tributaries that we will discuss later. It goes all the way up and at the level of the fourth thoracic vertebra, it arches over the root of the right lung to open in the superior vena cava and terminate. So the origin of your azygous vein is the union of the right lumbar azygous, the right ascending lumbar and the right subcostal. Its course is defined as begins below the diaphragm and it enters the thoracic cavity by passing through the aortic opening of the diaphragm and here when it enters its relations are anteriorly lies the esophagus, posteriorly are the vertebrae. To the left of the azygous vein lie your important structures, the aorta and the thoracic duct. These were the additional structures that were passing through the aortic opening as well. And finally, on the right of the azygous vein lies the right lung. Finally, the azygous vein terminates by opening in the superior vena cava at the level of T4 vertebra. So now let's talk about the tributaries of the vein. As arteries have branches, the veins have tributaries as they have to collect the deoxygenated blood and take it towards the heart for oxygenation. So in case of azygous vein, what are the tributaries? Basically, the azygous vein has to drain your, your thoracic wall uh, by means of the posterior intercostal veins. So that it has to receive the posterior intercostal veins or not. and on either side, there are 11 posterior intercostal veins on the right and the left. So the right posterior intercostal veins will drain into the azygous vein directly. However, what about the left side? So that's a story that I will tell you now. On the right side, there are 11 posterior intercostal veins. Out of the 11, the 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 and 11, these posterior intercostal veins are the tributaries of the azygous vein. Apart from this, at the level of 8th thoracic vertebra, the azygous vein receives the tributary at its lower border called the hemiazygous vein. While on the upper border of 8th thoracic vertebra, it receives a tributary called the accessory hemiazygous vein. How are these veins formed? Well, these are the major veins responsible for draining the posterior intercostal veins of the left side. 
which we will talk about later. It also receives tributary of the superior intercostal vein, which is formed by the second, third, and fourth posterior intercostal veins. So these were the tributaries of the azygous vein. Now let's talk about the hemiazygous vein. Hemiazygous vein is actually a mirror image of your lower part of azygous vein. Hence, it is formed similarly by the left lumbar azygous, left ascending lumbar and the left subcostal vein. The hemiazygous vein forms and it receives the tributaries of the 9, 10, 11 posterior intercostal veins. So the left sided 9th to 11th posterior intercostal veins drain into the hemiazygous vein. While the accessory hemiazygous is a mirror image of the upper part of your azygous vein, this basically uh, begins at the fourth intercostal space and it drains the fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth posterior intercostal veins. These form the accessory hemiazygous vein and at the level of the upper border of eighth thoracic vertebra, it turns towards the right and drains into the azygous vein. So this was a brief outline of the azygous venous channel. Let's go over the various posterior intercostal veins and how they are drained. So let's talk about the right side first. Yes, the 2nd to 11th, we know that they basically eventually drain into the azygous vein somehow. But what about the first posterior intercostal vein? Superior vena cava has two main tributaries. These are the left brachiocephalic vein and the right brachiocephalic vein. So the first posterior intercostal vein of the right side drains directly into the right brachiocephalic vein and reaches the superior vena cava. The other posterior intercostal vein of the right side, including the second, third, and fourth, these join together to form the superior intercostal vein and they drain into azygous vein, which finally drains into superior vena cava and goes to the heart. The fifth to eleventh, these as well drain directly into the azygous vein. The left side, the story is a little different. The first posterior intercostal vein of the left side drains directly into the left brachiocephalic vein and the second, third, fourth posterior intercostal veins of the left side, these similar to the right side form the left superior intercostal vein which drains into the brachiocephalic vein. And finally the fifth to eighth posterior intercostal veins of the left side drain into the accessory hemiazygous and the ninth to eleventh drain directly into the hemiazygous vein which eventually reach the heart. So this was the brief understanding of your azygous venous channel. Thank you so much for watching.